This is Sean, welcome back to the American Soccer Coach. This video is going to be talking about an MLS Youth Academy League. And now, this is completely a theoretical. I have nothing to say that this will for sure happen. Um, but this is my guess on what I think is gonna happen. And the reason this is my guess is the Development Academy is canceled. So there's no longer a Boys or Girls Development Academy. And a lot of the teams in the Development Academy that are non-MLS, um, for example, on the West Coast in California, you have clubs like Patty Adores, Real SoCal, and um, Irvine Strikers that are now playing in ECNL. And then there are clubs in uh, the Carolinas, clubs in the DMV area that are now playing in ECNL as well, former academy clubs, former development academy clubs. So I think what you're going to end up having is a MLS Youth Academy League where only MLS teams play in the league. And I'm going to kind of share my thoughts on if I think that's a good idea, if I think it's a bad idea, and how we can improve it if it does happen. Um, John Kanich, uh, that Croatian guy, had a very good tweet. and or, I mean, I think it was actually part of a podcast. And what he said was, if you had an MLS Academy League, you have, um, let's say there's 26 MLS Youth Academies, and you have 18 players on each roster, and you have U16 and U18 age groups. So you have two different age groups. That would mean that you have under 950 players in a country of 320 to 330 million people. So should we limit our player pool to under 1,000 players? I think that can be a bad idea. And the reason I think that could be a bad idea is even with the development academy, one of the big issues was if you looked at the youth national team, a majority of the players came from MLS academies and almost all the players came from development academies whether it was MLS or whether it was not MLS. And I think the fear that I have is that if you only have an MLS Youth Academy League, suddenly the scouting of the former DAs that are now in ECNL, or even clubs that are not in ECNL or not in the DA, or, or not the DA, clubs that are not in the um, ECNL or clubs that are not in MLS Youth Academies are not getting scouted as well. And I'm not saying, like, obviously you will have some scouting in those areas. It's just not going to be anywhere near as much as you're going to get in an MLS Youth Academy. So I think that is one thing that, you know, we need to be careful with because we, the, the best players do not magically always just go to the MLS Academies. The best players, uh, even last year or two years ago, do not always go to the de development academies. Um, and just like anywhere else in the world, you have – clubs, you have scouts, you have coaches that go to find the players and get them to play at the high level, not necessarily the other way around. Um, now, if you do have an MLF youth, Acad uh, youth Academy League, what I think could be a really good idea and could actually help a lot of soccer in this country at the youth level is getting rid of homegrown territories. And if you don't know what the homegrown territory rule is in MLS, Pretty much what an example of the rule would be, say you have a player like Jesus Ferreira who plays at FC Dallas. But let's just say, for example, that FC Dallas did not think Jesus Ferreira was going to be a professional player. They did not think he was going to be good enough or he, he didn't fit their style of play. But for some reason, um, let's say the Galaxy. The Galaxy thinks he's going to be an excellent number 10 or number 9 and he's going to be a starter for the team. So getting rid of the homegrown player rule would mean that Jesus Ferreira, Ferreira can not only play for the FC Dallas, but he can also go and play for another MLS Academy or MLS first team. So he can move, with obviously the approval of his parents, from FC Dallas to the Galaxy and the Galaxy Academy. And right now, we do not allow that. Now, that is a big problem because not only are you going to have some players that MLS Academies don't value, that another, another academy would in a different city or state, but also you obviously have non, I mean, you have areas in, in, in the United States that are up for grabs pretty much because they're not part of a homegrown territory. Um, so I think that getting rid of that would actually be very beneficial. And another example I'll make is Christian Pulisic. Christian Pulisic did not play in an MLS academy, but let's just say that instead of playing for PA Classics, he played for the Philadelphia Union. And he, the Philadelphia Union did not think he was going to be a great player. Okay, well, if Christian Pulisic can play for the Red Bulls, or if he can play for New York City FC, or he can play for DC United, or he can play for Inter Miami Academy, um, obviously he went to Europe, but it just gives him more options to explore if he wants to stay in the United States. So I think that that would also incentivize clubs from smaller markets, for example, Sporting Kansas City, the Portland Timbers, 
Um, it would incentivize them to improve. Sporting Kansas City already have a very good scouting network, but to improve the scouting and the recruitment in their academy. And the reason for that is being able to scout wherever you want is going to help you compete with areas like Los Angeles or New York City, where the Galaxy or New York Red Bulls, New York City FC have historically had a lot of success, not only because it's you know high level soccer in that area, but also, I mean, it's the two biggest cities in the country. So I think that the two things we need to make sure happen, if we do have an MLS Youth Academy League, the first thing we need to make sure is that players are being scouted outside of the Youth Academy League, whether that's an ECNL, whether that's in state competitions, whether that's an ODP, but we also need to make sure if we do have a Youth Academy League, that if we can get rid of the homegrown player rule, where players can go outside of their city or outside of their state, I think that would be very beneficial. I would be very surprised if they get rid of the rule. I, would, I really would. But I think it would be very beneficial for youth development in this country. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about the video. And let me know what your thoughts are on U.S. soccer. Take care.